Hello and welcome to the June 2nd episode of This Week in Esports. Believe it or not, this is actually our second episode. Woo. We are coming to you live from the Microsoft campus here in Redmond, Washington, and we're showcasing some Mixer magic. Now to help explain that, we don't have Kate Yeager today, but I'm Ricari Austin and we've brought Mary Kate from the Mixer team to tell us a little more about what this stream can do. Hey, I'm MK Ives, and I work in the partnerships team uh, on Mixer, and uh, we're going to be showcasing FTL, which is our unique uh, streaming protocol for sub-second latency and also showing off interactivity where viewers don't just watch, they get to actively participate in what's happening on the screen. Really what this means is you guys are in control. Nowadays, there is a lot to cover in the esports scene, and since this show is for you, you get to decide what we talk about being the voting options that you'll see soon above the chat window. That's right. We don't choose the topics we discuss. You get to do that for us. We've only got 30 minutes each and every week, so make sure you get your vote in if you want to hear your favorite esports topics discussed. Before we get into the segments that we have for this week, we're going to start this show and every show with a treat we like to call Clip of the Week. So while we're watching this clip, make sure to get your vote in so we know what to discuss after our Clip of the Week segment. But this one here is a little bit near and dear to my heart. You may not know this. I work on the Killer Instinct team, and I was watching this from this past weekend. Combo Breaker 2017 took place in St. Charles, Illinois, and what you are seeing is Valorax playing as Cinder and UA Wheels playing as Saberwolf in the finals match. Now, Valorax has a lead. Has mm -hmm. Saberwolf backed into a corner? Wheels has nothing that he can really do. A pixel Looks of like health. he's done. Yeah. Time is running out, and he's actually got Cinder's got these bombs that he can attach mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. opposite player. But out of nowhere, Wheels closes Look at that the comeback. gap, uses his shadow move, and it is insane. Look Takes at the, the crowd ultra going combo. wild. That's unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. Now, I'll tell you this. I was watching this at home from my couch, and it was one of those things where you could hear the crowd. You could see the chat going nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm but I remember jumping up and yelling myself. One, I scared my kid, but <laughs> ignoring that, I actually yelled so loud that uh, my neighbors started banging on the wall telling me that they could hear me and the slew of words <sighs> that aren't safe for work that I was saying. Esports, possibly the best reason to get kicked out of your apartment? Mm. I don't think I could write that on a future <laughs> like apartment application. Like what I happened at your last I yelled too loud about my favorite Combo breaker kid. happened, mm. but it was definitely a hype moment Worth and it. in that. Worth it. Wheels actually took second place. Big shouts to him. Big shouts to Valorax for Atta winning. boy. Mm. All right. So you guys have had a chance to vote. We're ready to jump into our first segment. Excuse me. Your voting options were Halo, Madden, League of Legends, and Killer Instinct. And we're going to talk and about... And Halo it is. Weekly Halo action is back for the second consecutive year. Uh, ODST dropping in the form of Pro League, powered by our friends over at ESL. Now, Halo started their summer 2017 season last week with the NA Pro League and got their first day of matches in the EU underway yesterday. More on that later from a very friendly face. In NA, veteran teams such as Optic Gaming and Team Envious are joined by up-and-coming teams like Ronin Esports and Luminosity Gaming. Now, matches typically occur on Wednesdays and Thursdays every week, but make sure to check out Halo.gg for a more detailed schedule. Recapping the games from last week, Team Optic Gaming, to the surprise of no one, finished their week one matches going 2-0 with a 75% map win ratio. That's that's okay, right? I mean, I've heard it's decent. That's decent. I could do that's better. Right. I, you, you know, actually, why don't we go pro? Yeah, right. <laughs> Players Lethal, Snakebite, Frosty, and Royal 2 recently got second place at the HES Daytona Land this month and were looking to get revenge on the team who beat them in that tournament, Team Envious. Thanks to the scheduling masters over at ESL, they planned for a rematch of that finals on day two of the league, pitting Optic and Envious against each other in a best of five series. Now, after Optic went down 0-2, it seemed like a repeat of HCS Daytona, but Optic Gaming wasn't having any of it. They were able to win all three of the following games to reverse sweep Envious and take their second win of the season. Like Congratulations to Optic. And if you want to check out their next match, head on over to Mixer.com slash Halo on June 14th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. Another surprising storyline from that first week is the new team Splice, who won the last chance qualifier for the number eight spot in the NA Pro League. They finished their week one matches with a score of 2-0 also. And going up against fan favorites, Evil Geniuses on day one, and former darlings of the 2016 season, Team Liquid, the Splice players of Boo Boo Doo Boo. I love saying <laughs> so that. Much fun to say. Oh Boo -boo my gosh, Boo Boo Doo Boo, tongue twister. Shooter, Renegade, and Shotzi impressed all with their solid teamwork and great plays. 
Now, I was expecting them to do well. I mean, they have to, right? In the league and make it to the finals, but they wanted to show everyone that they meant business by coming out of the gate hot. And this should, ser <laughs> this should serve as motivation to all amateur competitors because this is a team who qualified from open signups. So if they can do it, so can you. No, don't, don't look or point at me when you say that because I am no way going to be able to qualify. I believe. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Taking a quick look at the standings, Optic Gaming and Splice finished with first and second, with Team Envious in third place. Evil Geniuses, Team Liquid, Luminosity Gaming, and Ronin Esports all went one and two after two weeks of play to land them in the middle of the pack. Now hopefully Straight Rippin' can start their comeback as they start out 0-3 for this season. They'll need to pick up the pace, and soon, as the bottom two teams in the standings will be relegated and face off against the open bracket teams in the Summer Pro League Finals. Gotta get up. 0-3. Not a good place to start, but you can uh -uh. do it. We believe. Now, Pro League isn't just going down in the NA. Our EU friends also have a league of their own. And rather than tell us, or excuse me, tell you what's going on over there, we're not going to tell you, but we brought in one of our Halo correspondents and fellow EU Pro League caster, Richard Sims, on the show to give you an overview on the league. So let's see it. So my name is Sims, and I work on the European Pro League, mainly casting Halo. I've done a few other things here and there. I'm doing a lot of esports stuff at ESL UK, uh, in the back works and such, but mainly casting Halo and more recently making memes. The amount of memes that I've been pushing out on Twitter and on various forums is... Uh, it's pretty wild to be honest if it's become a, a bit of a hobby of mine but so eu pro league is basically and essentially like the na pro league except we have two less teams so we have six teams battling it out across five weeks of regular play everyone plays each other once and they play in a best of seven series so there's quite a lot on the line we've got a thirty-three thousand dollar prize pool it's a lot of cheddar for the players but most importantly this time round we have four spots at dreamhack atlanta so we're going to be sending four teams across Cross the pond to the states and injecting them into that bracket. So we have six teams currently. We have Team Infused, Invictus, Divine Domination, The Lads, Supremacy, and XL Esports. A couple of new names in there, a couple of new faces. A few teams have been splitting up here and there, but coming out of the open circuit, we have Divine Domination and a team called Hum. Bit of a random name, but they've recently been picked up by XL. So we've had two new additions to the Pro League from the last season. One team disbanded and a few other things went down. But, you know, it's good to always see two open teams coming up through the open bracket, through relegation, actually making it here today. So, yeah, we've got some nice, a mixture of talent. We've got old talent that's been there before. We've got back-to-back -back champions. We've had a few people drop out. But now we've got some new talent in there also. So definitely keep an eye out. We're only into week number one. That happened last night. Okay, so the one team that I want to kind of say that people should be looking out for is definitely, without question, Invictus. It was known as London Conspiracy, but now it's going as its own independent name. And the reason I'm saying this is because this has kind of been a team that's been put together off the back of various team split-ups. This roster now, and, you know, when you look at the roster, Cristola, Ramirez, Snipe Drone, it's, it's solid. Last night, they looked incredible. Um, we've got new settings in Halo for the, the eSports side of it. And honestly, I think it's just blown these players' potential up so much further. You know, it's kind of, whether or not they can do it more when we come to DreamHack, we will find out. But honestly, I love international play. Everyone enjoys seeing it happens. Everyone kind of calls it a bit of a meme when it comes to European Halo. But you know what? These boys have been given a chance to shine over in North America. There's obviously going to be the prize pool on the line for DreamHack Atlanta everything to play for there's a lot of pride on you know on the line there's a lot of money on the line honestly it's just it's just going to be an extremely extremely good event it's going to be great for open teams to turn up participate try and make a name for themselves and even from a spectator point of view watching this happen live down on main stage it's going to be a fantastic fantastic event All right, big thank you to mm -hmm, Richard Sims, mm -hmm. who is at The Sims on Twitter. What and a guy. Just real quick, uh, we saw a question in chat. We did Mixer about the merch coming? Mixer Merch store. Uh, it is not available yet, but it will be. I don't think we have an exact ETA, but yeah, you know, if you're if you're if you're eyeing our mugs, or your sweet jacket. mugs, my jacket. Uh, All right, we need I mean, to. I might be able to hook you up with a jacket. There Shh. we go. <laughs> so while that was rolling, you guys Soon. were voting on your next segment, and your options were Street Fighter E League, Madden, League of Legends, and Killer Instinct. 
and we've got Madden. Madden All right. Do you want to kick us off? Why not? Over time, EA Sports has been getting more and more invested in the esports space, and it continued last year with the release of Madden 17. Now, trying out something new. How's Madden that to make you unveiled. feel old? Oh, <laughs> don't remind me. Of, I remember <laughs> that Madden 95 on the couch. But Madden has unveiled a four-part circuit where users can dominate in the game mode of their choice and advance to the Madden championships based on their placement. So that means whether you like head-to-head, -head, draft champions, or salary cap, the Madden championship had a flavor for everyone involved. The circuit kicked off in December, and with lands every couple of months, the Madden championship triggered the final phase of the current series. 32 players made it into the Madden championship, and ESL hosted them out of their Burbank studio to produce all the action. Starting out with group play matches, players such as Evil Ken, Dubby, Sirius Mo, and Estella were determined to show off their skills and take down anyone who stood in their way. The competition was definitely fierce, and the action, which started out with 32 players, worked its way down to 16, and eventually we got to our top eight. Giving them the recognition they so rightfully deserve, we have to shout out Dots on Your Dome, AKA Lowe's, <laughs> Young Kiv, Boogs, and Volterax for making it to the quarterfinals but who are unfortunately taken out by their opponents. We recommend watching every game from the quarterfinals as they were all action-packed and showed why Madden is still such a great title to watch. Now, moving on to the semifinals. We're getting closer. The offensive focus Skimbo went up against the Madden Classic champion, Spot Me Please, and Skimbo showed off his stuff, winning the game with a convincing score of 28-14. On the other side of the bracket, New Jersey native Joke took on the Madden GOAT Eric Problem Right and, spoiler alert, Problem notched out a victory by winning 28 to 27. Only a one point difference. Like a, a clincher, that's a barn <sighs> burner. So that gave way to the Madden Championship 2017 finals between Problem and one of the best Madden 17 players in Skimbo in the match did not disappoint. Skimbo was able to get the first touchdown of the game in the first quarter and extended his lead to 10 before Problem was able to close out the first half with six points of his own. Now after halftime, Problem jumped out to a 20-10 lead, scoring 14 points by the end of the third, but the game was far from over, yeah? Skimbo, who got second place at the Madden Challenge a few months back, was able to score two more touchdowns before the clock ran out, taking the lead and first place honors at the Madden Championships with a final score of 24 to 20. Now, of course, it was great, a great tournament to watch, and the folks from EA Sports and Madden have a real eSports winner on their hands. You know, I've heard some people say, and they're in that room over there, that the eSports Madden scene might be better than real football. I'm curious as to what you all think, but credit to ESL for the uh, fantastic production value as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So what are we going to be doing next? Okay, we've got Street Fighter, E-League, Smite, League of Legends, and Killer Instinct, and drumroll please, the winner is... Smite. Let's jump into some Smite. I started the last one. Why don't you do it? Yeah, all right, all right. Now this week, we get to shine a spotlight on one of the franchises whose esports programs have been running since 2014 for not only the PC, but the console as well, Smite. Uh, Smite was created and published by High res Studios, and it's in its fourth year with their 2017 season. In case you haven't watched before, you'll see familiar team names such as Team Envious, E United, and Luminosity, just to drop a few. I see these names everywhere. Like, they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're multifaceted. They're multi-talented. Right, right. You've got those cream of the crop teams that just know how to pick them. I, I'm not one of those players or teams. Smite is no stranger to global tournaments, though, and they have appeared in leagues in North America, EU, Oceania, and even Latin America. Right now, all Smite roads are leading to the summer finals at DreamHack Valencia, where the PC players involved in the Smite Pro League and the console players involved in the Smite Console League get to have their own respective finals. Now, on the PC side, eight teams will be competing for their share of a $150,000 prize pool, where the top four EU teams, the top three NA teams, and the top South American team get to face off in a single elimination bracket. To determine who these teams are, the Smite Pro League, which showcases match play every week on twitch.tv slash high res, is following the riot model of season relegations and one-off tournaments to keep you engaged with all the, the Norse God action. Now for the console users out there, teams like Elevate, Soar Gaming, and Astral Authority field players, and only four teams from a total of 10 will make it to the Smite Console League Finals at DreamHack. The only team from the Console League who looks like a lock are defending world champions Team Obey Alliance as they started off the league with a 2-0 two, uh, two win, two win over everyone else. The Smite Summer Finals will go down on July 14th to July 16th, but we recommend priming yourself with team and player information by checking out the summer split for the Smite Pro League. 
The summer split for the Smite Pro League, which is currently underway and has almost two weeks of match play under its belt, is already providing fans with all the juicy storylines one can expect from teams who are vying to be one of the best in the world. During league play in the European region, teams Hey, you're going to have to help me with this. We're going to say Yannick. 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 And Team Dignitas <laughs> finished on top of the standings with seven and six points, respectively. Team Dignitas were able to 2 0 sweep Teams Elevate and Burrito Esports and look for them to continue dominating as the season continues. Burrito Esports is a great name, by the oh, way. Oh, man. Um, can, can we get snacks afterwards? Oh, please. In the, in the NA region, Team Monkey Madness, there's another great name, <laughs> claimed the hot. top spot while Luminosity, <laughs> Team Allegiance, and E United are tied for second. As a reminder, you can catch all these summer split action on Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays on Twitch on Twitch.tv Wack High Res. And if you want to keep up to date with the standings, team profiles, and more, head over to esports.smitegame.com. All right, they man. They all turned when I said Wack. Crazy so stuff. Kate and so I did get into I. it. I'm going to ask you. Okay. URL slash ending bit or whack ending bit? I've never heard anybody say whack before. What is that going is on? I lost the, the vote last week. The fact that you week. use this... whack is whack. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey. You know what? No, you know, Ed, you stop <laughs> it. There. Even our producers are laughing. <laughs> All right, that's it. I see what's happening. <laughs> Whatever. We're going to jump ahead because you guys have been voting on our next There's segment. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> and you know what? Like, if I could blush, boy, right now, I'll tell you. Your choices were Street Fighter E-League, Clash Royale, League of Legends, and Killer Instinct. And we've got... What do we got? League of Legends. Take it away. Last weekend, the top eight collegiate League of Legends teams went head-to-head -head in Los Angeles to prove just who had the skills to take home the championship. Those teams were Texas A&M, Carnegie Mellon, Toronto, Simon Fraser, Maryville, University of British Columbia, Maryland, and Robert Morris. Heading into the competition, Robert Morris and British Columbia were strongly favored to come out on top with BC looking for their third straight collegiate championship even after qualifying as a wild card. But Maryville, a newer team from St. Louis, managed to knock out both of these teams with their win against UBC in the quarterfinals and their incredible and upsetting 3 nothing sweep against Robert Morris in the semifinals. Now, over in the other half of the bracket, Carnegie Mellon beat out Texas A&M in the quarterfinals, putting them up against Toronto, who had managed to take out Simon Fraser in the quarterfinals as well. Though Carnegie Mellon put up a solid fight, Toronto's improved teamwork was really evident and ultimately led them to victory. Now, this meant for the third year in a row, the grand final would be a face-off between Canada and the U.S. Toronto we're against coming Maryville. for you. Well, you, Maple you syrup take people. Sound? All right, you said we're coming for you. I, see, I learned something about you there. <laughs> well, game one looked as though Toronto might take the series. Maryville showed just how fierce of a competitor they were by dominating each following game with skillful aggression, solidifying their places as the 2017 college champs. Calling themselves the Dynasty Killers, Killers, excuse me, Maryville is certainly making a name for themselves Oof. in the League of Legends collegiate world, especially since they're the first American institution to mm. win ULOL. A huge congrats to them as they celebrate an epic season, as well as their well-deserved college champ status. In college, for the brief time that I went, definitely didn't have an opportunity to do that. No, no. So I mean, I yeah, I got out of college in 2010. And we did not have college esports leagues. I had sports leagues, played basketball, did mm -hmm. not have a chance to play League of Legends. I mean, that would have been awesome. I was a competitive ballroom dancer in college, but we didn't have esports yet. That's a whole nother show that I didn't so know existed until now. A whole nother can now, of worms that, that we are not opening, putting that under here for later. Okay, so what were your voting options this time? Street Fighter E-League, which has been up there all show, by the mm -hmm. way. Clash mm -hmm. Royale, Forza, and Killer Instinct. And we've got... Forza! Let's talk Forza. In Forza Racing Championship Season 3, the qualifications for Le Mans is now over. This season was all about who from the virtual world of racing could make it to the real world 24 hour of Le Mans, an endurance race competition held in lovely France. Week four races wrapped up with Attacks Johnson taking top points in the EU. In the North American region, Car Harmonic swept the races again. He's won every single North American race this season. He's completely untouchable in any car. Mm. Doesn't matter on any track. Get this, privateer driver Paul9339 is still in the running and will be going all the way to the grand final at 24 hours of Le Mans. Race marshals are still finalizing their tallies, but look out next week for the complete list of drivers going to the grand final. Speaking of the grand final, on the rival side team, Cars Plus Esports is still dominating with top points across the board. Can't wait to see the inner team competition like it's coming up between players Harmonic, mm -hmm. Lage and Lightning Tune into the Forza Racing Championship Season 3. The Porsche Cup Grand Finals on June 17th and 18th will be live here on Mixer.com 
<laughs> whack Forza Motorsport straight from the 24 hour of Le Mans. <laughs> Look, I'm every next cheap time, shot I can next get. Next time I need to get the, the URL so I can just drop some knowledge on you. <laughs> okay, next. What have we here? Okay, still Street Fighter E League. It's no not going love. away. No it's love not going Street away. Street Fighter, Clash Royale, Gears of War, and Killer Instinct. And what do we got? We've got Gears of War. So let's talk the Gears of War Pro Circuit, which continues this weekend. Mm -hmm. In fact, we mean right this very second. You can go to Mixer.com slash Gears of War slash Gears of War and watch the best Gears of War teams in the world as they compete in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, go after our show, of course. You just stick around. I want to know how you got the bullet point with the URL. Whatever. Rigged. I, this is rigged. I'm psychic. This interactivity is rigged. <laughs> so there are 16 teams competing in four pools, competing for $300,000. Pool A has Optic Gaming, Ghost, Enigma 6, and just like all the other pools, each will be filled with an open bracket team. It could have been you. Pool B is Team Envious, Allegiance, and Vitality, followed by Pool C with E United, Splice, and Sovereignty. Last but not least, we have Pool D holding Echo Fox, Epsilon, World's Best, and an open bracket team. We have to wonder if Team Optic is still riding high from their pair's open win, or if someone will finally dethrone them. And those looking for some swag can tune in and claim limited edition Emerald Phantom uh, Snub and Hammer Burst skins today and different skins each day of the event. Let me tell you how quick I'm going to get this headset off so I can go claim that stuff on my own. You're just uh, going to be like, will, leave your chair spinning. Yeah, no, it's gone. It's, it's, it's not gone. even a spinny like, chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will even have raffles for things like a limited edition Gears console, rare swag bundles, Xbox Live memberships, Ooh. Gears item packs as well. To snag all those items, head on over to live.gearsofwar.com, rigged again, and we'll be <laughs> back next week with an event recap segment to fill you in if you don't get a chance mm. to watch this weekend. I mean, swag. Mm. All right, we're ready to jump into our next segment, which you have voted for. Okay, Street Fighter, still no love there. Clash Royale, Injustice 2, Killer Instinct, and we've got... Injustice 2. So we're going to head back on over to Combo Breaker 17, which was the first big mm -hmm. event for Injustice mm -hmm. 2, which just launched recently, if you guys don't know. Uh, it's the new game from the makers of Mortal Kombat, NetherRealm Studios. Mortal Kombat 10 players like High Tide, Dragon, and Biohazard made it to the top eight in Injustice 2, but the real stars of the show were Sonic Fox and Tekken Master. Now, despite the fact that the game was only released recently, Sonic Fox dominated his matches with only two games dropped. Sonic Fox mostly played Black Adam and Deadshot, and when it came to the final matchup in the Grand Finals against Tekken Master, he won with ease, finishing it out 3-1. to one. Deadshot's a great zoner. Mm. Sonic Fox is considered one of the best, if not the best, player when it comes to Mortal Kombat and Injustice, so kudos to the EVO champ for holding the crown. If you want more Injustice 2, NetherRealm is currently running a competitive gaming circuit for the game called Injustice 2 Championship Series, and you should go sign up. It's open to anyone, and you can get more information on injustice.com slash esports. You're already laughing. Like, the second you said, <laughs> I was like, I knew it. This is, I'm gloating. This is my gloating face. All right, How about them apples? Oh, no, that's great. No, no, no. Enjoy it. Enjoy <laughs> it. So, you voted. We're ready to reveal your choices were Street Fighter E-League, <laughs> big surprise, Clash cool. Royale, Tekken 7, and KI. And we've got Street Fighter E-League. Finally, oh, finally, finally, here if, we go. <laughs> if you tuned into our episode last week, we did an event preview segment on the E-League SFV playoffs, and we recommended that you tune in, and boy, we were right. E-League, one of the newest companies to turn its sights onto esports, invited 32 of the world's best Street Fighter V players to their studio in Atlanta, Georgia this month to participate in the E-League Street Fighter V Invitational. K-Brad, Infiltration, Gutex, these are some of the names we're tuning into every week for a glimpse of Street Fighter V being played at the highest level from the biggest FGC superstars. Coming into the playoffs, those 32 players dwindled down to eight and included competitors like Daigo, Momochi and Wolf Crone, but let's focus on two players for right now. Finalist number one, Punk from Panda Ooh. Gaming, and finalist number two, Phenom from BX3 Esports Club. Following Punk runs through the bracket, he faced off against PR Balrog in the quarterfinals, and even though both Punk and PR Balrog finished first place in their groups, Punk won the match with a three to nothing finish. Now on the other side of the bracket, Phenom, the top Seed from Group D faced off against Fudo, who won first place in Group C. In similar fashion to the Punk's match, player Phenom took down Fudo with a score of 3-0. to zero. Now with both players Punk and Fudo advancing to the semifinals, they faced off in a four-game series with Phenom edging out Punk with a 3-1 finish. From there, Phenom only needed to win one more series to secure himself the first place prize of 150 grand. 
rant. Punk wasn't done yet. However, as he took on Phenom's previous opponent of Fudo, who won back-to-back -back matches to earn his way to the Losers Bracket Finals. We definitely recommend you check out this match as Punk and mm. Fudo put on a great show in Game 5 or in a five-game series where Punk won 3-2 and it easily could have gone in Fudo's favor. All of that set the stage for the Grand Finals and rematch between Punk and Phenom. Now, after trading games back and forth to the count of 2-2, Punk managed to use his Karen character to full effect against Phenom's Nikali to pull ahead with a 3-2 score. Uh, from there, momentum was in Punk's favor, and unfortunately for Phenom, he dropped one of his combos in the crucial final moments of the game, which Punk capitalized on and took the championship. Congrats to not only Punk, but all the other competitors who made it into the top eight of the tournament. Quite a feat to achieve among that mm. many superstars that were in attendance. Mm. And for those of you who are into E-League and super into Counter-Strike, the next production coming from the Turner folks will be the E-League Clash for Cash, the rematch. This will pit the E-League major first and second place teams against each other in a show match that will give Vitrus.pro, the runner up, a chance of redemption against the team who beat them in one first place, Team Astralis. Head on over to <gasps> eLeague.com. Oh, no whack. Destroyed. <laughs> For more information on the event <laughs> taking place June 16th at 10 p.m. on YouTube, Twitch, and TBS. The odds sure are forever in my favor. I see that. This is... You volunteered as tribute somewhere else that I just <laughs> didn't know was a thing, and now I'm just sitting here with yeah, all the URLs with nothing wrecked. great in them. Oh, all right, okay. we are ready to what move on left? to our next segment. We've got World of Tanks, Clash Royale, Tekken 7, and KI. And it's Killer Instinct. Love this one. Uh, you take it away. This is your baby. All right. So Combo Breaker, one of the staples of the fighting game community, recently wrapped up their 2017 event last weekend in St. Charles, Illinois. The event was held at the Mega Center, and about 15 to 20 different games were featured in full-on tournaments or exhibition matches, such as Injustice 2, Tekken 7, Guilty Gear, and of course, KI. 169 entrants battled their way through the pools to be one of the players in the top 24. Now, kudos to the KI players, because 169 is a new tournament record for them. Again, I know these Ooh. numbers. I've yeah, burned into my you. head. Yep. The yep. tournament held many highs and lows for those well-known in the fighting community, with Polio and Young Tate taking seventh, Base and Nikki taking fifth, Thompson taking fourth, and Amenti grabbing bronze. In the grand finals, it came down to the players Valorax versus Wheels, like we saw earlier in the clip, and Wheels was fresh from his comeback from the loser's bracket after losing in the semifinals. Wheels clutched it big time in the first set of the grand finals, winning 3-0, and what that did is actually reset the brackets, so they went head-to-head -head again. Mm -hmm. So Valorax got his second win in the next set with two straight wins. Now, Valorax gets cocky. Mm-hmm. Which you do, you know, you're, you're in winners finals and then you, you you're, win you're winners finals and you go into game, grand you're finals. You're crushing it, yeah. He lands. <sighs> we we talked about this earlier and it, it still it, it takes my breath away. Mm -hmm. Wheels landed that ultra combo with mere seconds on the clock, winning the round and sending the crowd and myself and my child into an absolute uproar. And your neighbor. Yeah, and my <laughs> Don't neighbor. Forget the neighbor. <laughs> that moment was like it just unbelievable. For, for eSports, super intense. Short-lived, though. Valorax took the next round and sealed the victory to finish with a 3-1 score mm -hmm. in that second set. Uh, for those of you who watched live, developers Iron Galaxy gave Killer Instinct fans something to look forward to this June. All right, that's what I got to say. We got to send over something special. The 29th character added to the roster coming this month, Ooh. and his name is Eagle. Check out this brief teaser trailer. Fun fact, mm. not only does that teaser out, but we dropped the hero art today, actually. Today? I was, I was wondering if that was going to happen. Published it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well, welcome Eagle to the roster. That's exciting. So later this month, we'll have more information for you. But each and every week, we'll try to highlight a player from one of our games. And this week, we've been talking about him a bit. We're mm. going to give a special shout out to Wheels. Mm. Though not the winner, second place is still quite a feat out of 169 players. So Wheels is a Gargos main. Actually, Wheels has been through multiple characters throughout Killer Instinct in his career. 22-year-old and a fierce competitor in the KI scene, currently partnered with Ultra Arc. Kate. Playing KI since it first dropped, Wheels has spinal muscular atrophy type 2, yet he continues to put all his tournament efforts into KI and hitting the top of the brackets. 
Having played Street Fighter and Marvel before that, he found his home in KI, and I will say it is amazing watching him use an Elite controller. Mm. I swear that's not a product plug. It's just it's absolutely incredible watching mm -hmm. him get set up and going. Yeah, the new Elite controller is gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. So Wheels won fifth in the KI World Cup back in March, and now he's second at Combo Breaker. I'm hoping this means I'm absolutely rooting for a first place victory coming in the future. Will it happen? We'll see. Wheels is hoping to be attending the East Coast Throwdown in September. If you want to catch him in the meantime, you can at twitch.tv slash UA Wheels, where he loves to promote, uh, c uh, provide clean entertainment, learning experiences, and fighting game knowledge. All right. Well, we've done it. We made it through the second episode. Mm -hmm. You had mm -hmm. a good time, yes? This was awesome. Thanks for having me. No, absolutely. Now, as we do, we're going to end each and every show talking about tournaments. So let's detail the upcoming tournaments that you guys can view and participate in. Next Level Battle Circuit, a New York local tournament series, and is open to all. Try to best the NY locals in a variety of fighting games. And if you mm. can't make it in person, check out at NYC Next Level on Twitter for match VODs and to know when the broadcast is live. HCS Open Circuit Cup number two, Halo's version of appeasing the amateur scene. The HCS Open Circuit provides seeding points and bragging rights as players prepare for the large open bracket tournament at DreamHack this summer. Go to halo.gg for more information on the circuit and ways for you to register. You. <laughs> All right, there we go. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you Thanks, all for Rikari. watching us. We are glad to be here, and we'll see you again next week with more. Next episode is next week, Friday, mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Eastern, and we'll see you then. Bye, y'all. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Whack. <laughs>